Hey everybody, I uh, hope you guys had a gr uh, great uh, Christmas and a uh, happy new year. And uh, as 2023 kicks off here, I wanted to come uh, and uh, kind of do a little something different here, at least to share a little bit of my experiences uh, over the last 18 to 24 months of getting into uh, and being a new adventure rider. So uh, part of this is I wanted to give five categories that I think are key and important to uh, you starting off in your adventure life, I guess. And part of that is, is, is just my perspective on some things, um, and what I went through and maybe some of the mistakes I've made and, 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 you know, just kind of my experiences. And like I said, I thought I would share this, uh, because I think it's important and uh, this way you guys have an idea of kind of what to expect uh, getting into all this. So, A, I'm assuming that you bought a bike or have a bike or have your thoughts around getting into the adventure world. So again, plenty of bikes to choose from. I have a couple adventure bikes. I've got a, obviously my 21 BMW 1250 GSA, and then I have a 22 Aprilia uh, Touareg 660, um, which is relatively brand new. Uh, between both bikes, I've, I've well, the GS has over almost 38,000 miles on it now, and and my Aprilia has about 600 miles, five 600 miles on it. So, um, so that's one. You're going to get a bike. So whether it's one of those, uh, it could be a Tenere, a KTM, it could be a Guzzi. It could be any uh, number of an adventure bikes. There's plenty out there, KLRs, you name it. Uh, there, there's plenty of different models. Again, it's all to what you're doing. But I think these five categories are kind of gonna give you guys an idea of what to think about when you're getting ready to do this or in the process of doing it uh, to help you. So let's kick it off. Number five. Navigation, tracking, rescue. It's kind of all the same. So, a couple of things in this arena. One, I use a Garmin Zumo XT. Uh, if you have a BMW and you ride a BMW and you, uh, I would tell you to stay away from probably the Nav 6 uh, that they sell. I've had four in the last like 12 plus months and I just decided to go with the Garmin Zumo XT. A lot of people use it uh, throughout the community. It's a, it's a great tool. There's a lot of bells and whistles to it. You have to really get to know it. But what's kind of cool is that you can do your routes on there and then you can also have your phone connected to it and have the weather overlay and you can kind of see where the weather is comparative to where you're riding. So uh, when I start talking about those things, that's one of the things that um, uh, with your Garmin, uh, your phone obviously can be used. Um, for you know any of your navigation the problem there is that you have to download maps or if you're offline because if you don't have cellular coverage obviously you can't use your cell phone so uh, those are things that can you know consider or whatever uh, i also uh, talk about uh, using um, actual maps and i carry those too especially like doing bdrs or anything like that um, so this way you've got kind of navigation down pat uh, so when you're talking about communication, I have a satellite, um, I have a Garmin inReach. So if you're getting into a venture, I would highly recommend something of this nature. Um, there are, you know, a couple of different things out there. They do come with subscriptions. Um, so my Garmin, it's uh, $30 a year and I get rescue. There's insurance and stuff that I get for rescue uh, for myself and the bike. Uh, also, there's a fee, monthly fee, so you can communicate. So when you're really off the beaten reservation, you can actually type uh, messages uh, and relay them to you know key contacts, your your significant other, or whatever, uh, while you're out, and you can communicate back through satellite. And then this also has map built in. This one does. Uh, the, there's a new Garmin Mini uh, that has some capabilities as well, but this one has another map. So in case uh, again, you can never be 
two uh, out of that when you're talking about that. So again, so you've got navigation, tracking, rescue, all those things are tied in. There are some monthly subscriptions, some fees to some of the, like I said, like the Garmin inReach. And I would highly recommend that if you're getting into this, to have some capability uh, to be able to communicate, especially if you're off the beaten path. So, all righty, next one coming up. Four, uh, for me, this is tires. Uh, so depending on the bike that you have, I started off when I first started riding, I had the Michelin Anarchy uh, Adventures on there. They are 80-20, they are loud, and they, for what I was doing, they were not great. And so um, I, I find the Anarchies in general loud. I went through two sets of them in 21. Um, I moved to the Dunlop Trail Max Missions. I've had four sets of Dunlop Trail Max Missions. Fantastic tire. They are a 50-50 tire. And so if you don't know tires, I mean, again, there's a bunch of us stuff out there. There's other tires. There's Kenda Big Blocks. You've got, you know, there's all TKC 80s. There's all kinds of them out there. But I had the Dunlop Trail Max Missions. Great tire. You can get eight to 12,000 miles, depending on how heavy, you know, what you're doing with those tires. But, you know, I know a lot of people get 10, 12,000 miles plus out of them, but eight to, eight to 12. Um, they are not great if once you start getting into medium to heavy sand or medium to heavy mud. So they're great for fire roads. They're great for a little bit off the trail. You can do a lot of different things in them. But when you start getting into just a little bit rougher territory, and again, this all comes back to what kind of riding are you going to do for an adventure rider? So again, tires, I would look at, I personally run uh, 70, 30, mostly 70% off road, 30% on the road. I run Motaz, I run uh, Motaz Adventure in the rear, and I run either the Rally or the Dual Sport in the front. So uh, um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of my tire. So that's number four. Number, four. number three, I would take a, you know consideration on your luggage system. What you gonna run? There's hard pan air, soft pan airs. Um, pros and cons of both. Uh, if you're gonna do more touring than you are off-road, hard pan airs is fine for you. I have them. I had them on my bike when I first started doing this. It was mostly doing more long hauls and the hard pan airs came in fantastic. If you're gonna do some heavy off-road, which is what I transitioned to last year, uh, and, and, and I'm talking about 21 and, the, and then all of 22, um, I went to the soft pan airs just because uh, my bike likes to take a lot of naps. <laughs> so, uh, and I find that uh, there's plenty there. I, I use Moscow, which I think is fantastic. Um, my buddies, I have quite a few people that lose, lose, uh, use Lone Rider. Great product as well. They love it. Um, you know, there's Giant Loop and uh, Wolfman Luggage. There's a bunch of different stuff out there, but uh, I would just say, you know, invest in the right bags for you and what you're going to do on your bike and make sure you have the right, that right luggage uh, for your travels. So that's, that's the third category. So second category, bike protection. And um, again, depending on what bike you have, uh, you know, hand guard protectors, you know, uh, bark busters or anything like that, skid plates. The more you do off-road, I'm gonna tell you, the OEM skid plates are usually garbage. They're paper thin. You get a good sized rock that kicks up or you come off and hit a rock pretty hard or something pretty hard on that, 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 that skid plate, uh, you're gonna do some damage probably to your engine and you're not gonna be happy with yourself. So invest in a good skid plate. Uh, chances are most of them are going to be four, five, six hundred dollars, depending on you know what model, make, and everything like that. But invest in that. Crash guards. That's another thing. If you're again, if you're going to do more adventure riding, you're going to be doing more dirt, off-road stuff. Got to get crash bars. Uh, they'll save you a ton. It did me. You'll see some of the video for it uh, as I rode off of a cliff. So get the crash bar bars on there. So. Uh, those are some little things that you can do. Like if you have a BMW, get the cylinder covers to protect the boxer engine. You'll see those on my bike. So uh, again, get protection for your bike because obviously it's one of the main pieces of your riding. 
it's one of the main pieces of your investment and having the protection for your bike uh, is key because uh, you might not ever use it, which I hope you never do, but if you do and you have it, you'll be thankful that you have it. Number one category is gear. And again, gear means a lot. Helmet, boots, gloves, jacket, pants, base layer, all, all that stuff. But I would tell you, research it and do, you know, get good stuff. And um, don't, if you think you're going to do adventure riding, get a good pair of boots. A good pair of boots are going to cost minimum $300. If not, most chances are four or $500 for a good pair of waterproof boots. Um, and just invest. Um, I, I, I kind of dickered around, wasted some money. I would tell you, invest the money now, get yourself some good, good, uh, adventure boots. CD, um, Toucan from Alpine Star. Um, you gotta get the higher end on the, uh, Forma boots. Um, you know, so stick, you know, get some good quality boots. Uh, helmet, you know, a ride, showy, climb, uh, you know, get get yourself a good adventure helmet. Um, some of them make some modulars if you want, like the modular style. But again, get a helmet and, uh, you know, again, a lot of different options out there. Uh, gloves, you know, have some different seasonal gloves. I would, I would carry at least two pair with you. You never know if they get wet or you're going to have rain. You need Gore-Tex gloves. You need some for summer, some for whatever invest in the gloves and then what is it a riding suit what kind of uh armor does it have inside of it um you know pants same thing and then your base layer so again gear uh to me is your number one thing and then your bike protection so you got to think about those things bonus round after you get think about all that stuff you got your bike all this other stuff if you haven't been to some training courses, do it. I don't care how experienced you are, how good you think you are, you can always learn something and you can always be pushed to learn more. And um, in my two years or almost two years, I've gone to three training classes. I've been to the BMW school in South Carolina. I've been to Dragoo training level three. Um, I was actually there on uh, for their level two training. Uh, which is fantastic in their garage day. So again, Dragoo, Dart Training. I'll leave some links in the descriptions. And then I've done Tom Asher's training, who does pretty some real world uh, immersion type stuff. And um, But it never hurts to continue to keep learning and practicing your skill set. So especially if you're getting new into the ADV world and adventure motorcycling, and you want to adventure and you want to do, you know, some... Uh, off-road stuff, um, even single track, depending on the size of bike that you have, do the training class. It, it will help you. It'll help you with your balance, uh, bike control, um, you know, just little things uh, to learn when you're out there and, you know, kind of doing your thing on the bike. So, so again, let's, let's go through that. So, so five, navigation. That's, you know, get the basics there. Uh, four, you're gonna look at tires, what kind of tires, what kind of terrain, what kind of riding am I gonna be doing in the adventure world? Uh, three would be the luggage gear. Again, hard or soft pan ears, depending on what you're doing. I would go soft if you're planning on doing more off-road. Um, if you're planning on doing more touring and then maybe just some gravel road, the hard pan ears are gonna be fine for you as well. Um, you know, as long as you don't get into some crazy, crazy arenas or whatever like that. Um, and then, um, uh, two, you're going to look at, uh, and then two, you're going to look at their bike protection again, bark buster, skid plate, a crash bars, those type of things that will protect you and your bike. It actually, you know, obviously more of the bike than you, but at least it'll, you know, maybe save you some damage and save you some money down the road, you know, fixing your bike. And then number one's gear. Um, and you know, kind of all that stuff. So again, I think those top five are going to be key for you. If you're new in the adventure world, you can go through all my videos and see all the different things that I've have, but it's a lot, um, you know, and just make sure that you choose the right things for your bike and uh, do the research on it. Obviously a lot of stuff out there and, uh, you know, hopefully you can help and then obviously get that training in, uh, and, uh, 
you know, I think build those skill sets. I continue to keep doing it. I still learn more and more every time I get on the bike, I learn more and more every time I go to a class. So it doesn't hurt to continue to keep learning. So again, hopefully this helped you guys uh, to just get a little basic concept, five categories again, and uh, the training piece. And I think it'd be fantastic for you being a new adventure rider. And uh, hopefully we'll see you out there and uh, going to a lot of places this year. So uh, feel free to stop, say hello. Uh, always like to meet folks and uh, continue to uh, keep growing inside the community. So uh, take care, have yourself a wonderful 2023. And hopefully this has been helpful for you to think about uh, kind of what you're going to do in the adventure world. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.